Today we're talking about the new update in our Model Y. It is the Hardware 3 Model Y. For some reason, we still have yet to get this update in our Model uh, Y Hardware 4 car. Uh, but it is a nice update. Of course, another free update as always. And uh, let's check out what the new features are. So this is the new update 2025.32.3, which is actually just minor fixes from 2025.32. 2025.32 had minor updates, which, okay. So we have some different temperatures that we can set for dog mode, which I don't typically use because we don't usually take our dog, leave her in the car. I wouldn't trust her uh, to stay in the car. Maybe someday we'll think about trying that. <clears throat> um, and a couple of security fixes and minor uh, performance enhances. So that's fine. But what is exciting is the new low power mode. So you now have the ability to set your vehicle to low power mode, which will be great for those times when you are going to leave your car in a location, say at the airport or something like that. You're going to leave it for uh, more than a week or something like that. It won't be draining all of the uh, power from the accessories being on, from the cabin overheat being on, and from the uh, sentry mode. Because sentry mode actually takes up a lot of energy. Uh, obviously, the most energy is going to be the cabin overheat if you have your, your car in a hot climate. It's sitting there and you have that on, but you can turn that off anyway. So that's something that you could always easily turn off and you would surely think to turn that off and you can actually turn that off from your phone so not as big of a deal sentry mode you can turn off too but some of these things like the accessory power and uh, things like that it's nice to have it all just in one setting so you can just say low power mode and then basically it's going to draw the least amount of power uh, possible for that extended amount of time therefore when you get back to your car should have plenty of battery left uh, to go to your destination. Now, the bummer of it is, obviously, sentry mode is nice to have on your car uh, when it's staying for a long period of time without you around. Um, it's nice to have, you know, that security on the car. But, of course, if it's going to drain the power, I think it usually drains about a percentage a day. It just depends on the vehicle. Uh, and how active it is in the area. So we did leave it at the airport uh, when we went on a trip a while back, and it did actually drain a few percentage on it uh, over the course of the week. It was actually in a very busy area in the airport, so a lot of people were walking by and triggering the uh, dash cam or the sentry mode events. So it'll just log all those events and you go through and look at all of them so yeah so this is going to be a nice update to have for the car so it looks like you just go to controls charging and low power mode so we'll check that out controls and then it says for charging and that's where it's got the blue dot that tells you where that new thing is so you go to low power mode here and it uh, says it disables energy consuming features when you're not in the vehicle doesn't give you much info info there maybe this the icon okay great so this gives you a summary of all the things it actually does it takes off the sentry mode the summon standby okay that's another one i don't usually have that on but that's definitely if you do use summon standby so that your car is uh, more prepared to go into smart summon uh, when you're parked Definitely something to keep in mind to take that off because that does take more power. The accessory power, which we already mentioned, keep climbing on the camp mode. That's really all to do with the cabin overheat and uh, everything. I mean, I guess you could leave the keep climbing on, but man, if you did that when you left your car for a long period of time, you're, you're really asking for it. But again, you know, this is a great way to just go ahead and make sure everything is set off and you don't have to remember each individual thing. Uh, the preconditioning, cabin overheat protection, which we already talked about. Um, let's see, while charging with low power mode enabled, then you can have the sentry mode and accessory power still available. And 
keep climate on and camp mode are only available when supercharging. So this, this way you could put it on low power mode and just have it plugged into say a, you know, 120 outlet and it would still have this, the sentry mode, which would be nice, but it would also turn off these other features with the climate um, <clears throat> and the summon standby, which are again, power draws. But if you're plugged in, I, I don't really see why you would have it in low power mode necessarily because all of those things should be able to be powered by unless you have a really slow trickle charge all those would be powered with no problem and then if you're supercharging you can get the keep climbing on in camp mode so that's that's <laughs> camp mode while you're supercharging i mean i don't know how long you're going to stay in the car camping on a supercharger uh, that would basically not make any sense because you'd only be supercharging likely for at most like 40 minutes if you went from zero to a hundred so whatever but anyway that's a great new feature for uh people to use on low power mode for and this this is all the teslas but for some reason i don't have it on my hardware four car yet i do believe it is coming it's probably going to be the next point release or something like that so we'll see now, with, as with every update that we get in our hardware three car, I am going to take it around the block and see if our problems with FSD have been resolved in any way. I do not expect that any of them will be, but I figure for good measure, I might as well just give it a drive and let you know if the lane hugging, the left side of the lane is uh, fixed or the speed control where sometimes it will go around 30 miles per hour in a 45 for no apparent reason. So if those are fixed, I will let you know. If not, well then, still we are waiting for an update that fixes these problems for our Hardware 3 uh, FSD. All right, so we'll just try it here in the neighborhood for just a moment. It gets around that car nicely. It's almost like if it's a, it's a hard situation then sometimes it does better. I don't know what that's about. At the moment, it seems to be actually staying to the right pretty well, even in this unmarked. So usually I don't use 12.6 F4 in the neighborhood because it is very bad at that. <clears throat> this out here is definitely gonna be a true test of whether we've got any fix for it. So we are not doing so great on lane centering, starting to hit the line on the left and don't seem to want to go more than 40. Although it is red light, so maybe I should give it uh, just a little bit more time to tell. Okay, so this is a 40 mile per hour road. And we do have a lead car. Maybe sometimes that helps, I don't know. They're not staying in their lane centered, <laughs> uh, but you know, that's just a human driver, not a machine. All right. <clears throat> yeah, we're kind of, kind of going back and forth, but mostly hugging the left. Now we're even on the yellow line there. So still very much the same. I don't see any improvements. So that's a bummer. Yep, so sadly there was no improvement to the lane centering or the uh, speed control on Hardware 3 on 12.6.4 FSD. So unfortunately, no updates for FSD in this particular update as we figured. But it's great to have that new low power mode. Definitely something that I'll consider uh, when I have a need for making sure that I don't lose energy uh, while I'm leaving the car for extended periods of time. So that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.